Stephen's looking very relaxed now, but he needs to prepare his tardivo leaves for his asparagus and goat's cheese salad. The trouble with not being very busy is that it gives you time to worry about what your rival's up to. Let's have a little taste. Yeah, of course you can. No, you're not allowed to. I've just put the chicken stock in, so I'm just waiting for the uh, legs to cook now, really, and they're not I love the off. vinegar and the salt, that's lovely, yeah, that's really nice. nice. Do you know, I think she has got him worried. What's that? That's the... Uh... That's, I'm going to deglaze those with a bit of orange. You want your vitamin C intake. Do you mind not nicking one of my five a day? Face? You're one of your five a day. Oh, you've got to find I'll another give you four now. Other five a day, as you say. Having driven off the enemy, Angela can now get on with her dish. The chicken mousse is chilled and ready to go into the quail breasts. But she's no sooner started than Stephen pops around again. He's like a very nosy neighbour. It's like a quail sandwich. It is a quail sandwich. I could call it that and I'd win hands down just by putting sandwich on a menu. I can just feel it's going that way, do you know what I mean? The more crazier you are, but I might be totally wrong. I have total faith in Prue that she's all about just good, honest cooking. So, modern British food just means smart cooking given deceptively simple names, does it? Well, we'll find out if the judges agree on Friday. But there's no doubt that good quality counts, so Angela's set off for South Wales. Quails become very popular on British menus, and Angela's quest led her to Penthrough Poultry Farm in South Wales. It's 8.30 a.m. and the residents are ready for their breakfast. Mark Adams has run this farm with his partner for almost three years, rearing hand-fed, free-range birds. There are over 2,000 of them here at any one time. This really is free-range, isn't it? I mean, this it's amazing. This is free-range how it should be. This is what farming's all about, in my opinion. Hiya. You're going for my fingers now, kids. They're certainly peckish, aren't they? But luckily for them, Angela isn't cooking goose. OK, as you can see, this is the quail house. This is where we keep them all. So we're going in? We're going in here. Have a closer look at them. If I go in first, just to make sure none fly out. The birds are kept in warm, straw-lined houses, safe from foxes. As you can see, them hiding in the straw there. Oh, God, I don't want to stand on one. No, they'll soon move. The demand for these bite-sized birds has rocketed in the last few years, with Mark's farm seeing a 40% increase in sales. Quail has become a truly modern British ingredient. People obviously like them as a delicacy for their eggs mainly, yeah. but more recently the meat as well. The meat, yeah, yeah, of I course. I mean, the quail restaurants eggs, yeah. seem to like meat from the quail, particularly because it's a nice size for a nice starter. Yeah, that's well, that's exactly what I'm it's doing. Very with little mine, fuss. Actually, yeah. You literally have the whole bird. It's on a plate. You haven't got to cut it into portions yeah, yeah, or do anything yeah. fancy with it. Since there isn't much of them, the taste needs to be maximised. And how long would you mature them for flavour? In terms of hanging them, they're normally hung for no more than about three days. Right, okay. Because of their size, if you hang them much more than three days, they can go a little too gamey. Too gamey, OK. Can That's we try and pick one up? Certainly. You just approach hey, it steak. nice and slowly and then just try and cap your hands around it. Do you want to catch one of them? Oh, no, no. Oh, there no, we go. It. Nearly there. They're quite fast. They are, aren't they? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm very slow, actually. Oh, you've got a god. You don't care, do you? Go for it. Oh. So you cap your hands around their wings, otherwise they'll fly out of your hands. Now, this little bird probably doesn't want to hear about cooking, but fortunately, Mark has one he prepared earlier. How would you eat your quail? I personally just roast it or cook it under the grill. I'm going to put a little few spices on I there, maybe a bit of honey. Personally, I put nothing on it at all. I think the meat itself speaks for itself. You're telling me I shouldn't be doing that now. You're trying to rewrite my... <laughs> <laughs> but Angela's sticking to quail.